In this video, we're going to look at uh, wave particle duality, the de Broglie wavelength, as well as electron diffraction. Now, in diffraction interference, the behavior of light can be explained using a wave model. Then, in the photoelectric effect, a particle model is used to explain how light interacts with matter. Light can behave both as particles and waves. De Broglie, in 1924, proposed that just as light has a dual nature, so might all particles. Any particle, such as an electron, might also have wave-like properties. This is called the wave-particle duality. He suggested that the wavelength lambda associated with a particle is related to its momentum mv by the formula lambda is equal to h over mv or lambda is equal to h over p. Because we know that momentum is p. Now, this comes directly from E is equal to mc squared, that is Einstein's equation, equating that to hf. So, mc squared is equal to hf. It has to come down to this value there. Please do work it out and let me know in the comments whether you managed to do it. Now, let's look at this uh, example. Using Einstein's mass-energy relation, E is equal to mc squared, and this formula E is equal to hf, energy of a photon show that p is equal to h over just like what i was telling you show that p is equal to h over lambda he should be able to do that number two a calculate the de Broglie wavelength for a cricket ball of mass 0 0.15 kg moving at 30 meters per second now so given the mass and the speed or the velocity you'll be able to calculate the momentum p so it will be 0 0.15 times 30 that will be the momentum p there Planck's constant is 6.63 .6 times 10 to the power of minus 34. And then you can calculate lambda by making it the subject of the formula. B, calculate the de Broglie wavelength of four electrons of mass 10 times minus 30 kgs moving at 10 times 10 to the power of 7 meters per second. Again, you're making lambda the subject of the formula there because here that's the mass. Mass times velocity gives you the momentum. And then you have the Planck's constant, so you make lambda the subject. Comment on your answers to A and B. You should be able to comment on your answers. So number 2C, we do not use a wave model for the ball since the wavelength is very small. So you should be able to get a very, very small wavelength for the cricket ball. The wavelength for the electron is, this, is of the same order as the wavelength of X-rays. X-rays can be diffracted, so it is possible for electrons to be diffracted. That's what you could gather from that. The number three, find the mass of uh, a photon of yellow light of wavelength that. So in this case, you are using mc squared is equal to hf. Remember, hc over lambda for that uh, meter. If you do that, you should be able to get the answer that is uh, recorded right there which is uh, 3.7 times 10 to the power of minus 36 kgs. If you do not, please let me know in the comments. I'll be willing to help. And then at number four, find the energy and momentum of a particle of light of wavelength 500 nanometers. So HC over lambda, you get the energy if you do that. Now that you found the energy, you equate it to MC squared, and then you make MC the subject of the formula to get the momentum. So hc over lambda is equal to mc squared. So after finding hf from hc over lambda there, you should then be able to equate that mc squared divided by c. Remember, we know the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. So you'll be able to make mc the subject, which will be your momentum. Then b power of a beam of light is 4 watts. How many photons pass a point in the beam per second? So you should find the energy of one photon, which is the energy of the photon is the one that you got from there. Then you divide that by the four points. This is joules per second. Divide that by that. You get the number of photons passing through. If you do the maths, you should be able to get 1.01 times 10 to the power of 19. So strictly, it was supposed to be this divided by what you're going to get, the energy that you got. So this over that. Then two, what is the momentum of all the photons? then you're just dividing by C. The value that you got, that will be the momentum. Then what force does it exert? Force is equal to change in momentum over time. So that's going to be 
since it's per second, so it's going to be the same answer as the one that you had before. That's this one. Please let me know in the comments when, whether you're getting the same answers as I'm telling you. Right, electron diffraction. De Broglie managed to show that uh, all particles, remember all matter can also behave like waves, can also behave like uh, particles in the same manner. So they performed this experiment on electron diffraction. J.J. Thompson managed to perform this experiment. And when a beam of electrons is passed through a thin layer of graphite, the electrons form a diffraction pattern is shown. The rows of atoms in the graphite act as diffraction grating, and the beam is diffracted onto the screen. Electrons are diffracted because the wavelength is roughly the same size as the spacing between the atoms in the graphite. The de Broglie wavelength of an electron can be found. So I've got this to show that experiment. I should be able to see that. So that is this the wall system there. Right, so we do have a cathode there, produces the electrons. So they're produced by thermionic emission and then they are accelerated to the screen. So that's the electron gun that produces the electron, the cathode, the thermionic emission. Then they are projected to the screen there. This whole thing is evacuated so that these electrons do not bump into uh, air molecules. So the graphite is placed there. So it's used as the diffraction grating. So the electrons pass through there and then we're going to get a diffraction pattern of the electrons there. You could also use a thin metal to do that. So this is the diffraction pattern that is observed on the screen. It's going to be bright rings where electrons are detected. So that's what you're going to get there on the screen. That's evidence that electrons can be diffracted. Now let's look at this example here. An electron in an electron diffraction tube, the accelerating voltage is 3000 600 volts, find the wavelength associated with the electron. Kinetic energy is equal to EV, so which is going to be kinetic energy momentum squared over 2m is kinetic energy. You equate that to EV, then equate that to the de Broglie at the end. So the de Broglie will be H, as lambda is equal to H over P. So substituting values of HME, we, we get a lambda is that. Okay, there are many ways of doing this in actual fact. So you could uh, work that separately and then find the wavelength right at the end there. So I'm going to end this video here on the De Broglie. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'll help in any way I can. Signing out.